All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. I am so excited because today is really a special treat because I am joined by um, someone very special. Her name is Diana Kokoska, and Diana is an entrepreneur, a keynote speaker, an author, a mentor. She is an award-winning business leader. She's established herself really as such a prominent figure, not only in the business world, but among leaders. And she has um, an amazing history where she started as the um, CEO of KW Maps Coaching and Training at Keller Williams Realty International. She played a pivotal role, I think, in propelling the lives and careers of countless people, including myself. And she is an innovator and a creator. She was an author of the KW Bold Experience and Coaching Skills Camp. And now she has a new book out uh, called Becoming More. You can't get to better until you get to different. And we're going to unpack that a little bit and talk to Diana today. And I'm excited because I know that you will be transformed by this conversation. And um, so I just want to start out by saying thank you, Diana. It's truly an honor to have you here today as my mentor and friend. And I appreciate you being here uh, on Monday Morning Mojo. Well, it's such a pleasure. Thank you, first of all, for the great opportunity. And they have so much uh, to listen to because of you. I mean, look at what you're doing to help so many people. And I just want to say, I know this is going to air later, yet today you had a great birthday. I mean, let's, you know, they should be singing happy birthday to you. And what an honor it is for me to share that with you while we record this podcast. Thank so you thank for you for that. I love birthdays. You know, it's the one day a year where you can just really celebrate you and your uniqueness in the world. And I, I, I'm sad sometimes when people say they don't like to make a big deal out of birthdays because I think it's such a great opportunity, not only to to look forward, but to also just appreciate how far you've come. And uh, so, thank you for that. Yeah, and when I know you're a far cry from 60 yet when you get 60 <laughs> my sister did something that was so fun for her birthday she did 60 new things oh I love that throughout the year so it was kind of like celebrating your birthday throughout the year right so yes. it was 60 new things she wanted to do I can't wait till she gets 70 because then she'll have 70 new things she wants to oh, do I love that I think you may have inspired me to do something like that I love it <laughs> So Diana, there's a lot of things we could talk about. I do want to put some focus on this new book because I um, am one of the few, I guess there's a few more of us, oops, you can't see it with my background, but um, I actually have a um, uh, early copy of the book. I'm in an advanced reader group and it's really an honor to be in that group. And, you know, this book really has spoken to me and I think that it will help the reader identify perhaps some inner conflicts they might be having, as well as their deepest desires towards living a more extraordinary life. So the first question I have for you um, is to tell us a little bit about what inspired the book, because with your career and all of the experience you have as an entrepreneur and a business leader and a coach, I know you're an NLP practitioner, you could have chosen to, to write about a lot of things, but you really I think focused on a few key concepts with this book. So tell us a little bit about what inspired you to, to, to write it. Well, first of all, our business, our life, everything grows to the extent that we do. So I wanted to put together a comprehensive proven model system and step-by-step -step approach that people could take to actually grow themselves and therefore grow their business in their life. I've had leaders say, this is a leadership book. I've had teachers say, oh, this is a back book about dealing with kids. And you as one of the advanced readers, and yes, there are very few of you and you can see how special you are, is because uh, this book literally um, takes us step by step and they are proven models and systems. Uh, what inspired me was you, you guys. All of the people that had taken the bold experience, many of them 
would say, when are you going to write a book? When are you going to write a book? When are you going to write a book? And I just kind of dismissed it. I, I've and been one in day some I groups was... where I've heard people ask you that question, when are you writing the book? So I agree with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I was down on the dock one day, Anna, because uh, we live on a lake and I'm sitting there reading and I got, I get a text. I get many texts and it said, thank you for helping me change my life. And I'm glad they said helping because they were the one that made the choice, right, to change their life. And yes, I can give them the words. I can ask the questions. I can help them think differently, yet they have to make that choice. And at the end, it says, when are you going to write a book to share with the world? And I texted them back. Thank you so much for your kind words. Never even addressed anything about a book. Went back to reading. And the very next page was John F. Kennedy's quote, if not us, who, if not now, when? Mm -hmm. And I went, okay, God, I got it. I'll start writing the book. And I started writing it. And uh, writing a book is not for the faint of heart. Let me mm -hmm. tell you that. Uh, literally, I have so much research that I never even used in the book because it started out 90,000 words and I had to cut it back to 65,000 words. And there's so much that you want to say that you don't really need to say. And yet I know how the brain works. And the way that the brain works, we have to build certain things upon certain things. It's kind of like building a house. You don't start putting the framing up without the foundation, right? right? right. I mean, you have to build a certain way. So, so this book literally helps them build that foundation uh, through our thoughts, our beliefs, our values, our emotions, all combining to make our mindset. And this is one of the biggest things about the book, because see, most people say attitude. In business, we talk attitude, yet in sports, they talk mindset. And I've often wondered why, why do they talk about mindset and we talk about attitude? Are they the same? And they're not. See, the attitude lives in the conscious mind. The mindset lives in the subconscious mind. Now, we know that our conscious mind makes goals, and we know that our unconscious or subconscious mind is the goal getter. So if this is the goal setter and this is the goal getter, if they're out of alignment, you're not making goal. We have sure. to have those in alignment. So I thought, okay, I talked that way. How am I going to teach them to get those in alignment? And that's what the book does. Of yeah, course, it I tells you the difference, yeah, in attitude and mindset. I, I was going to say that I really love that it has these exercises throughout the book, that it is a practical guide, really, to give the reader the opportunity to, to do the work while they're reading and learning these concepts. And I know that everything you do is intentional. So um, would you share with our listeners why it's important to do the work, to, to, to take what you're reading and then apply it? Well, I think the big thing, it's a great question, is if we don't apply it, but let me ask you, have you ever gotten on your computer and can't remember a password? Sure. Why? Because we don't use it enough, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's days I walk into the kitchen and I go, uh, why did I walk into the kitchen? I can't even remember. I have to kind of backtrack to think it out. So if we don't implement, we we just won't learn. In fact, I have a saying that today people are addicted to information and they are oh, allergic yeah. to implementation. They want to learn, learn, learn. That's the neocortex the part of our brain that says, give it to me. I want no more, more. Oh, I've been there, done that. Give it to me, give it to me. And yet it's, if it, we don't pass it into the limbic system, which is the doing part of our brain, it will never get into the cerebellum, into the being part of the brain, because we have to be it to do it, to have it, right? So if we have information and never implement it, we just have information. We can't even recall it like a, a password where we implement it. Cause I remember some passwords very clearly cause I'm using them over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Right. And that's what builds a habit. 
And once you do something over and over and over again, then you start to become the person that automatically does it. Just like two plus two equals four. I mean, right. how do we know that? Because we implemented it over and over and over again. So now we are being someone that can do the addition. That's it. Diana, do you believe that everyone has a desire to become more? No. I, oh, 95%. Here's my research. I almost started to answer that. And then I went, you got research for that. 95% of the world's population desires something more in their life. Yeah, I believe 5%, that. 5%, 5% will implement or hmm. do something to bring it about. So are we in the 5%? So how do we become the 5%? We literally train our brain to be a person that goes into the 5%. See, we've trained our brain, Anna, to be who we're being right now. We've trained it. It doesn't do the thinking for us. We trained it how to think. So that means, like neuroscience tells us, nerve cells that fire together, wire together. Nerve cells that no longer fire together, no longer wire together. So it's like taking a path out in a field or across the grass. You take that path over and over and over again, pretty soon there's no grass. <laughs> you, you see the path. That's like your brain. You've made that thought so ingrained in who you are being that you don't think of other ways. Now, let's say that you start taking a different pathway. And you put seed along that path. The old path starts growing grass again. And you have a new path. So therefore, nerve cells that fire together, wire together, which ones are you wiring? That's mm -hmm. why I came up with the assessment. When you take the assessment, and if you order the book before October 31st, you get the assessment free. After that point, it will be $29.95. So buy the book for $26 and get both or spend $55.95 and get both with whatever they want to do. Right. When you get the assessment, though, you're the only one that gets the assessment. If you want to share it with people, great. If you don't want to share it with people, you don't have to. Yet, if I'm going to drive from Austin, Texas, where I'm at, to Denver, Colorado, I need to know where I'm starting. Like Google says, where are you at? And now I'll tell you how to get there, right? The map mm -hmm. shows me. But if I don't tell it where I'm starting, how could it ever tell me how to get there? That's why we take the assessment. I want to just backtrack for just a second. Because see, with this attitude and mindset, once we know where our mindset is, then we can instantly change our attitude to go along. For example, let's say you have a judgmental mindset, but you have a positive attitude then you'll express that judgment in a positive way. Mm. If you have a judgmental mindset and a negative attitude, you're going to be very harsh to the point, probably screaming and yelling at people. When you have a curiosity mindset, your attitude will determine the type of questions you ask, or if you even ask them questions, because if you start asking yourself questions, you may go into the judgment, right? Anyway, it it helps us know where we're at. The second thing it does is it gives you decision points. For example, getting out of judgment and getting into curiosity, it'll give you like six decision points that you can make that you can do and implement every day in your life yeah. that takes you from judgment to curiosity, from scarcity to abundance. Yeah. And one of the frightening parts because we don't know who does what on the assessment. It just shows us assessments. And it says 72% of the people right now are in scarcity. 67% really? are in doubt. And they, when I talk with them, they say, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm an abundant thinker. <laughs> and then they take the assessment and they call me and they go, uh, I guess I thought I was an abundant thinker. See, we yeah. don't know. It's well, and I and the conversation you and I had recently, and with a, a few of the other readers, was um, just how things like COVID, you know, major events that cause trauma in our lives, 
have really changed us or changed our patterns of thinking. And, um, you know, the, I was thinking about that as I read this book, that this book comes or really arrives at a time where people need it most. I, I believe that because in COVID, first of all, we were all in shock. We mm -hmm. know that. And then what the brain does is it goes from shock to the fact of, ah, this isn't going to happen very often. It's not going to, it's not going to last that long. Then right. We, we thought two lockdown. weeks that we would be over it. <laughs> yeah. Right. But then all of a sudden, after a while, the brain goes into a stage, which is a frightening stage because of what comes next. The third stage is I deserve. Mm. I deserve to watch Netflix all day long. I deserve to eat. I deserve to have a drink. I mean, alcohol sales went up. People yeah. gained weight, most of them. I deserve stage. And then from the I deserve, we fall into learned helplessness. Mm. Learned helplessness is where we have, we build a cage around ourselves, a cage of comfort where our thoughts are the bars of the cage. And inside that cage, we're so comfortable. We don't want to get out, even though opportunity is outside the cage. They don't want to go back to work. I turned to my husband, Tony DeSello, uh, who many people on this podcast probably know. I'm so yeah. fortunate to be married to him. And I looked at him and I said, oh my gosh, honey, I've got to start doing podcasts. People could go into learned helplessness and we won't have people that want to even be on a job. And so I started doing Zooms. I did 76 Zooms in 40 days. Wow. Warning people that they had to stop. Lance Loken was the one that came to me first and said, do this, please. And, uh, okay, this is what we're going to do. And we literally had people making calls coming from contribution to keep yeah. themselves out of learned helplessness. We had people doing certain things because once people went into that learned helplessness, literally they wanted to work from home for the rest of their life. They don't want to do, it doesn't make them bad. It's the way that we trained our brain sure. and knowing it was going to go there knowing we were headed in that direction. If you didn't know it, you couldn't stop yourself. It's right. natural. Well, this, this podcast started as a closed Facebook group, which I began on May 20th of 2020. It was, there you go. it was, you know, I took a break from work. I've, you know, working from home, being on yeah. Zoom calls, leading our, our team, leading our agents, talking to other entrepreneurs, coaching people. And everyone was just full of questions, doubt, anxiety. And I, I got some fresh mm -hmm. air and the whole concept of going live every Monday morning to give people an opportunity, change the way that they thought so that they could change their day, change their week has grown now into this podcast. So um, I didn't I didn't know what to call it, but I knew I had to help people with, um, you know, this, this learned helplessness and, um, you know, that's how this started. So when you were writing the book and doing your research, was there something that surprised you the most? Well, one of the surprises was the attitude and mindset not being the same. Another yeah. surprise was it was around the emotions that we feel and the way that we speak about those emotions. I always knew that words are the rudders of our life, right? They steer our life in the direction we desire to go. Yet, do we really listen and watch our words? Like I had one lady that kept saying, oh, I'm depressed or I'm disappointed. I said, just say you're disappointed in something or say I'm working through it instead of I'm depressed about it, I'm working through it. It made such a difference in her life. And you know, it was uh, Dr. Lisa Feldman Barrett of Northwestern University that she said, it's not that most people believe that it's the outer world, the external world that causes them to have the certain emotions that they have. And it isn't, it's the story we make up in our mind that causes us to have the emotions. This part of that, that really was eye-opening to me was that you cannot remain angry 
unless you keep your focus on someone or something to be angry about. The yeah. minute you release that someone or something, the anger will go away. Yet we're the ones, the story we make up in our head, we're the ones that actually cause the anger to stay inside of us, that feeling and your emotions are not your feelings that was another part so they they just have to buy the book right yeah. so they can figure all this stuff out <laughs> yeah well you know you just referred to a few things and and I have that in my notes to talk to you about um storytelling right storytelling we know it's a powerful yeah. tool in communication and while that is true the stories we tell ourselves can really hold us back and can really yes. stop us from accomplishing what we want most out of life. And that's something that, you know, I know I have heard you teach and speak about for a long time is change your story, change your life. And I think that's one of the core principles in this book. When you think about becoming more along with just the be do have approach to life. So I do want to give people maybe one or two more little nuggets so that they do buy the book. But what does, you know, to someone who may not be immersed in as much personal development or who is just starting on this journey, this concept of be, do, have could be very new to them. How would you help the listener understand what you mean by that? Thank you for that question. First of all, you mentioned story. And yes, we are addicted to stories. Mm. Even when we go to sleep, our mind stays awake all night long telling ourselves stories, right? In every story, there's a villain, there's a, a victim, there is a hero, and some of them have coaches and mentors, right? When we look at the stories that we make up about ourselves, well, the victim believes and lives by the philosophy that I have to have what someone has to do what they do and be who they are, right? Right? Then the villain comes along and they go, no, it's not about what you have. It's about doing. You got to do, do, do. You got to beat up on somebody else to have what you have so you can be who you want to be. Yet the hero absolutely understands that you don't go into opportunity. You grow into opportunity. Therefore, you have to be it before you can do it before you can have it and you have to have it in order to give it. So here we are as whether they're realtors or whoever's listening to this podcast, it's you can be told what to do. You can be shown how to do it. Yet if you don't have the same attitude, mindset, energy around that project, it's not going to come out the same. It may come out close yet. I know so many people call me and say, what do I do? What do I do? How do I handle this? Mm -hmm. And I go, well, first of all, how are you thinking about it? Because see, a perfect example is they call me with the problem and they think that they want to solve the problem. Well, that in itself is a wrong way of thinking. Well, I shouldn't use the word wrong yet. It's a different way of thinking. When we look at that, do we really want to solve the problem because then you're going to focus on the problem and what you focus on expands. Right. And when you focus on the problem, you're working to make something go away. Why don't you just create what you want to bring into existence? Do you hear the difference? Yeah. Instead of focusing on what is wrong that you want to make go away, focus on creating what you want to bring into existence. That's a very good form of being and be, do, have. It's what we focus on. It's how we look at the world. And it's how we actually end up living our world. The book Think and Grow Rich is correct. It's think and grow rich, not do and grow rich, not have and grow rich. We right. got to think it before we can do it, before we have it. Right, right. Another thing I, I've learned about you and that I love about you is you have a core belief around bringing value to other people. Where did that start for you? I think it started at a very young age. I didn't recognize it at the time. Yet, I believe when you value people, you add value to them. 
when my mother taught me to twirl a baton and oh my goodness, she was such a great baton twirler. Really? And the minute that I did, I, I went to the five and dime. I don't know. People won't even know what store that is <laughs> yet. The five and dime. And I bought these little batons and, and of course they weren't weighted batons. I, I glued pennies together and, and put a, a plug in there. And then I, put the pennies in the baton, put the uh, top back on. So, so when you hold a baton, it has to be weighted the same on both ends. And, and then I taught how to twirl a baton and I charged the kids to learn, of course. And that a lot of people great. said, Oh, it's, <laughs> it, you, you were an entrepreneur. No, I was wanting to add value to help them become more right and then when I took dancing and I won many talent shows so I started teaching dance to little kids it was so fun because I wanted to add value to them and show them that they could have the confidence that they needed to do anything in life so I think it's about adding value regardless of where we're at are you sharing what you learn with others or or are you just hoarding it right yeah, and what you know, are you what, doing? Exactly. I and that's something I do talk a lot about. And I hope that anyone listening can can take a few things away from this conversation. But the fact that they have the power to inspire, they have the power to bring value and an influence, whether it and it, it on whatever platform they have, right? So you don't have to be an author, a speaker, or a world traveler to do it but there is an opportunity to do so. So any words to inspire someone to see themselves as more and to understand their, their power to influence others? Oh, I love that question. First of all, every single person has a gift. Mm -hmm. You were born with a gift. The question is, have you opened it up? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Have you explored what that gift is? Because you have one. And when you have it, it's a gift that you can share with the world. And even if you share it with one person, like you said, you don't have to be an author, a speaker, and, and be known by many. Because see, that one starfish, that old story about the one that he threw back in made mm -hmm. a difference to them. It's about making a difference in your own life so you can make a difference in others. Definitely. And John Maxwell, <laughs> I, I just want to mention um, that John, who is you, a mentor to you and to me as well, I know you've worked with him for a long time and an yes. author and really a world-renowned um, uh, leader on leadership. And uh, he wrote the foreword for you. What is... Yeah. If you could, if you could pick one thing that you feel was the greatest leadership lesson you've learned from John, what would it be? Wow. That is a tough question. <laughs> I'm sure so much from him. He's been my mentor for 25 years and just one second here. I'm going to have to cough. I'm so sorry. That's okay. We can do <laughs> it. Hmm. That's what I get for doing podcasts back. Talking a lot back today. Back. Yeah. Yes. So that's a great question because John has taught me so much. I mean, word after word, like, uh, well, I, I named one of my chapters off of something I learned from here. You either grow within or you go without, mm -hmm. right? Growth is an inside job. But I think when it comes to leadership, it's about casting vision, mm -hmm. casting it with clarity so people truly understand what it is you desire from them. Cast it with connectedness to where you're connecting with the people and they're connecting with you and the vision. Because people can buy into the vision and not the leader, which means they'll go find another leader, right? Yeah. Or they can buy into the leader and not buy into the vision which means they're going to leave too because they want to go after their own vision. So you need both. You need them to buy into you as a leader and to buy into the vision. Another thing is you literally talk about the vision all the time. Jack Welch, when I had dinner with Jack and Susie, he said, Diana, I'm talking about the vision every single day. I said, every day? 
And he says, well, not to the same people, yet I am talking about the vision every single day. In fact, some days I feel like if I talk about the vision one more time, I'm going to throw up and then I go out and talk about it again, right? So vision. The other part that I think is important is that we have standards and we have relationships. Because see, if I have high standards and low relationships as a leader, I come across as a dictator. Mm -hmm. If I have low standards and high relationship, I'm not a leader. I'm a friend. I'm their buddy. I'm their pal, right? If I have low standards and low relationships. I'm not a leader at all. I mean, I'm just wishy-washy. It's having high standards and high relationships as a leader, casting the vision and literally holding the standard of the culture that you desire that mm -hmm. makes us great leaders. And it's because, not always easy, but so important. Absolutely. Yeah. So... Diana, what's the one question you wish I'd asked you? I don't know if you answered it. <laughs> well, it's right now, because question. my focus, because my focus is adding value to people, I would say, how do they buy the book? I mean, <laughs> well, that's always, a, that was definitely going to be one of my questions for sure. So yes, we definitely want the I, audience to connect with you. I'm playing with you. It's a great question. And I had to buy some time to even figure out how I wanted to answer that. <laughs> well, so, you know, that's something that I question. learned from you. Um, <laughs> and I first met you about 11 years ago, and I've, I've, I've attended many of your trainings, your coaching skills camp and bold and had have had the pleasure of even just private conversations and dinner with you. And that's one thing that you've really taught me is the power of questions and, and being prepared with some questions, not to necessarily be prepared to plan out the whole conversation, but just be ready for a question. And um, so that's why I thought that would be fun to ask you, you know, what's the one <laughs> question you wish I'd asked you? <laughs> I love that question. And I think as I sit there and think about what would I want her to ask me, maybe about what are some books that people should read beyond your own? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I believe like Split the Difference is a great book. Uh, Necessary Endings by Dr. Henry Cloud. Uh, his book Boundaries is a great book. Think and Grow Rich, obviously, is a fabulous book. Uh, Developing the Leader Within. Mm -hmm. um, Oh my goodness. Uh, all these different, I mean, you got so many books right this behind just, you. Yes. Well, this, this is just at the office. I have 27 bookshelves at home that are all filled with books because wow. I truly believe it's your library that says who you are. Jim Rohn taught me that. And I love to read because that's one of the ways we become more and we, we not just read, we, we implement, I mean, Atomic Habits, great book, lots of things out there. Uh, what are we doing to improve ourselves? Well, that's something so else that I question. Yeah. What are we doing to improve ourselves? And that's something I've learned from you as well and have now gone on to teach others and talk, I've talked about it here on Mojo is the importance of having a personal growth plan. And I think that yes. people put a lot of time into a lot of things and entrepreneurs, you know, understand the value of creating a business plan um, and put time into that. I think um, people also could put a lot of time into planning a party, but the idea of sitting down to plan their growth makes people uncomfortable sometimes. They are, they look at you and, and they really want me to think about how I'm going to grow. What does that mean? Right. So growth has to be intentional, right? Absolutely. And in the book, there's an entire chapter where I actually share Mark Cole's personal growth plan mm -hmm. that John Maxwell taught him. And of course, I, I've made some things up in it, given some examples, because he said, this is the format, this is the outline. And then I gave examples of what people could do. Yet it is interesting. You mentioned something very great. You said 
people do a business plan. Yes, we our business needs it. Yet if our business grows to the extent that we do, and we don't have a personal growth plan, then mm -hmm. chances are you're not going to make that business plan. It's not going to work because you're not being the person that can actually do the work. Yes. Right? We've yes. got to grow. We've got to become more every day of our life. And by the way, I have loved getting to know you. I mean, at the <laughs> events that we attend, at that, I mean, just sitting at dinner with you and every year we get to see each other at exchange. Uh, that's so much fun. Yeah. And March 25th and 26th, John Maxwell and I are doing a, a growth conference, so to speak, where we're going to have some of the things we had at Recharge. We're going to have surprise oh, events. That's all so exciting. So much fun. Yeah. It's going to be in Nashville and VIPs are the March 25th and 26th and general is March 26th. And I know you're going to be there because you're somebody that is always there with yes. John and myself. And I just love that I'm going to get to see you there in Nashville. It. I hope to see a lot of the other folks there. Too. I wouldn't miss it. So, so tell everyone a little bit more about how they can connect with you, Diana, and, you know, learn more about you, but also purchase the book. So, and we'll, you know, share this in our show notes, of course, too. Well, I appreciate that very much. In fact, in your show notes, you can maybe even share the model of becoming more so they can see what they're sure. getting themselves yeah, into, great. right? Oh, I would love to I'll do send that. all that to you. Okay. So it's Diana, Diana Kokoska dot com or becoming more dot com is where you get all the resources for the book and all of that. So when you order it before October 31st, that's where you'll go to get the uh, assessment. You'll also get a hundred affirmations. You'll get a free chapter on energy that talks about the four energies of success uh, on Let's see, Instagram is Diana Kokoska, K O K O S Z K A. Such a tough one. And then, of course, I'm on LinkedIn. Love to connect with all of you because, after all, it's that connection, it's relationships that really, truly make the world go round. Yes, and absolutely. by the way, on that event, I just want people to know it's a fundraiser. So get oh, ready. Great. That's why. All of the money is going to be going to buy books to teach values to kids, as well as developing leaders. I sit on that board with John Maxwell and uh, Ed Bastian, uh, Tim Elmore, many people, and all of the profits are going to go to that. So you're you're doing it for a good cause and get a great tax deduction too, right? That's great. Awesome. So Diana, I hope that you'll come back and be a guest on, on the show again and that we could talk Love to. I know you bring a lot of value to everyone. To close out, is there a favorite quote that you would like to share? Maybe it's even one of your own. Well, I love the quote of Jim Rohn's. Uh, it's the fact of work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Mm -hmm. Because- Growth is an inside job. Mm -hmm. And so you grow within before you'll ever grow outside, right? So be more, do more, have more. That's what I would live, uh, leave with you today. I, I've got to tell you, I just love Anna being with you. I love your energy. I love the leader that you have developed yourself to be. And you just continually work on yourself. You are someone that shows us that growth can happen in so many areas of your life. I got to meet your son. What a great guy. I mean, just talk with him. I sent a referral and what a fabulous mother you've been to help raise such a great kid. Thank I you. was so impressed with him and his leadership abilities, which means that ripple effect just keeps going. And there's a lot of things in the book that, that I share for parents, things that they can do to put a growth mindset into their child versus a fixed mindset, mm -hmm. things that you can do that will help them become more and have a mindset to be an entrepreneur, to go after what they deserve in life. And I just want to add value. So thank you. You've helped me today to cross that off my list. Add value. Well, to someone. Thank you. You've done that for me as well. And everyone who's listened today. And I just want to thank you for 
really pouring into me and so many others for so many years. And I am honored to call you my mentor and my friend. And this was a great conversation. So thank you again for being here. And um, I thank all of you for being here too. So thanks again for joining us and we will see you soon. Thanks, Diana. Thank you so much. Thanks to the listeners too.